I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm doing this series on standing before kings, and I'm dwelling on responsibility. For me, when I was growing up in the slums, and from my father, I knew that what I needed to stand before kings is education. And so I took it seriously. And uh, I also knew that I needed education beyond certification. So I read beyond my syllabus. I read beyond my profession. I read beyond my immediate environment. So, and that helped me a great deal and is still helping me till today. I realized that any money in my hand, I needed to invest it in such a way that it will benefit my grandchildren and my grandchildren's children. So I manage my resources with my wife very frugally as we are growing up. So that's responsibility. In the parable of talent, the master did not provide supervision. He only gave them the vision. It was their initiative, their responsibility to take care and manage the talents that they were given. One planted his own on the ground and he didn't germinate and he was cast into where people were suffering and gnashing teeth. This one with five brought back five. But listen, he did not make only ten talents. He ate, he transported, he did other things, but he brought five talents. So it was their initiatives that matter. God did not tell me to write books. I took the initiative to write books. Even if he told me I could have forgot, I could have disobeyed. He did not tell me to start a YouTube channel. I started a YouTube channel. He did not tell me to do this video today. I took the initiative. So many people today have this entitlement mentality. They don't want to learn anything on their own. Something they can Google, they will not Google it. I told them, listen, They've given them pre preliminary education, skills. But it is up to them to go to YouTube to check how clothes are made, different designs are made. It's up to them to register for online courses or go to um, for more training elsewhere to hone their skills, to develop their skills. Nobody's going to do that for them. It's up to them. When I was when I took over a 40-bed hospital at the age of 27, I had deliberately um, stopped. I didn't go for residency, but I was always with my consultant surgeon. I was doing extra work, extra ward rounds, extra times in the theater to hone my skills on, in, in surgery. And I was when I was doing national youth service, I was going from hospital to hospital to learn skills. And when the, I was to take over the management of a hospital, a 40-bed hospital from an Indian, and I was with him in the theater learning the skills, and he would want to do the operations in different, with different styles, but I was, he didn't know that he was teaching me more styles. I was catching up with him. And there was this aspect that I didn't, couldn't catch up well, intestinal anastomosis. So... I took my stockings and I took needle and thread and demonstrated what I had learned in the theater using my stockings as intestines and I perfected it. And when they first strangulated hernia with a rotting portion of the intestine, a gangrenous portion of the intestine came, I was able to do it within one hour and finish the surgery. And within seven days, the person had gone out of hospital, removed stitches. So it was my initiative it was my responsibility. Initiative is part of responsibility. When you see local government chairman drive past bad roads, you see a wife with dirty accommodation, you see there are so many things that are, 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 are not well done in this country and several African nations and where black people live is because we are not responsible, we don't take initiative, we don't take personal initiative to improve on our lives. And the problem I am having with church is that we are blaming colonial masters. We are blaming uh, demons. We are blaming one old woman. That is the attitude of somebody who does not want to progress. Take charge of your life. The Bible says, 
Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And according to Mr. Bamuza of blessed memory, valuable as knowledge is, the power to acquire it independently is more valuable. Many of the things I know, people didn't teach me. Nobody taught me what I'm teaching you now. I took initiative. I knew it was good. And I decided to pursue it. The next thing about standing before kings is to be organized. If one is to be organized, it means that you do the right thing at the right time. You put the right thing at the proper place. Your life is orderly. You, you don't pile, you file. I was telling them that if any person brings cloth, you tag the cloth, have a page for the person, his charge, at the expected date of collection, you are organized. In any place where you have poverty, there is disorganization. People are not organized. And I find it difficult to work with people who are not organized. I have two men who have worked with me, Ado Eriri and um, Pastor Abraham, uh, very organized people, and Raymond Dorogunugbe, very organized people. You give them a task, they deliver results. If you are not organized, you can't stand before kings. If you are not organized, you will be with mean men because mean men are, are also unorganized people. When you go to where poor people live, they are very, very disorganized. My daughter-in-law, my son, my two sons, drove to Netherlands from Germany. And they went to a community. And the community was so well organized. The houses, the lawns, the streets, everything orderly. And my daughter-in-law, who is also a European, said that she wanted to go into their hospitals because she's a cardiologist, she's a medical doctor. So she wanted to, if the streets are as organized as this, how will their hospitals look like? Organized. We are a backward nation because we are disorganized. You see, people drive anyhow, people talk anyhow, people horn anyhow, people, I don't sleep well. There is a lounge here owned by my friend who is a lawyer with his children who are lawyers. They... My, they, they disturb me till daybreak, till 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock a.m. The roof will be shaking. I've told them several times they refuse to change. That's the spirit of backward nations, disorganized people. Any community, any society that is disorganized, any person that is disorganized, they don't do well. And when I see our children wear this head that looks like a, a grass. I always see the, the, that it's a reflection of a disorganized mind. And Afrobeat, if you listen to Fela's music in those days, when Fela is conducting his choir, you, you, you could see, but the Afrobeat of today uh, is so disorganized. It's, it's, it's another kind. Meaningless, the last music is still relevant in contemporary society. And um, it's just the level of thoughts of our young people. If we don't take care, we have no future with our young people in this country. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apuke. Learn to be organized. God bless you. <laughs>